I'm here today to tell you about a quest. This is a quest I've been on my entire career. Ever since 22 years ago, I was a young engineer looking around for how was I going to make a difference. It turns out, uh, growing up in Oxford in the UK, I didn't have to look very far, because in a lovely little village just outside uh, Oxford called Cullum, there is the world's largest fusion experiment called JET, or one of the world's largest. And it was fusion, or more specifically, delivering fusion energy to the world that was going to be my quest. This is how I was going to try and make the world a better place. So for the last two decades, I've had the opportunity to design, build, operate a numerous uh, fusion experiments around the world. And my current, my current job as head of operations at JET means I get to go in every day and play with one of the coolest toys in the world. It's cool if you're an engineer anyway, it's just, just, just amazing. So what is fusion, and why do we need it? it quite simply, fusion is the, is the process that powers all the stars in the universe, including our own sun. It's the process that happens in the center of stars, when gases get hot enough and at high enough temperatures that they fuse together and produce a vast amount of energy, several million times more energy per gram of fuel than the burning of fossil fuels. And it's because this process releases such a vast amount of energy with no CO2, no carbon dioxide, that we want to recreate this process in machines on Earth, like JET. And that's exactly what we do. In JET, every day, we, we create a mini star inside this machine by heating fuels to over 100 million degrees. That's pretty hot. <laughs> so, you know, we have to use all sorts of clever science and engineering to do that, and uh, in including using some very, very powerful magnets to suspend this mini star inside the machine and keep those huge temperatures away from the wall. Now, JET is an experiment that uses more power than it puts out. So what we really need to do now is master this process, make it lots more efficient so we can get much more power out than we put in. And then we want to use that excess power to produce electricity that is sustainable, low carbon, safe, and secure. Never in human history have we need, needed energy sources more that are low carbon and secure. And by secure, I mean that use fuels that every country in the world can have direct access to. Now, the fuels for fusion are hydrogen and lithium. And what's great is these really are spread around the globe. So anyone building a fusion power plant would have direct access to their own fuels. If you do the maths and look at how much hydrogen and lithium there is, there's enough fuels there to supply the, all of what the world's energy needs for thousands of years to come. But we're not there yet. So what we need to do right now is invest in renewables, energy efficiencies, carbon capture, and any project, quite frankly, that can get our carbon footprint as low as possible, as quickly as possible. But we also need to play the long game. We need to design power plants that all the countries in the world can build that don't depend on their access to things like oil, gas, sunlight, wind, or any other non-distributed resource. And that's where fusion comes in. Fusion really is the holy grail of energy production. But like any important quest, it's really hard. So we've got some scientific and technological challenges to overcome. But the great news, what's really exciting right now in 2022, is that the momentum in the field is building like never before. I've not seen anything like it in my 20 years. There are more companies coming in, more new ideas, more breakthroughs, more advances than I've ever seen before. The, 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 the effort is just turbocharged like, like never before. The world recognizes it needs fusion, and we're, we're getting the people and we're getting the ideas to deliver that. So what are some of the challenges in fusion, and how are we doing? When I first started in the field, lots of my colleagues were trying to figure out the challenge of how do we handle these enormous heat loads that are produced inside, this, inside these machines. In particular, in the exhaust system, if you see that sort of glowing red channel at the bottom of JET, that's the exhaust system. Now, that works for JET, an experiment, but if you scale that up to a power plant, you find that the heat loads are so high that there are no materials in the world that could su survive that. 
So we were scratching around for new ideas. How are we going to solve this exhaust problem? And there was a particularly promising idea from a team in Texas called the Super X Diverter. And that's what you're seeing on the right-hand side. So the idea was, if you could create separate chambers at the bottom and top of this machine for the exhaust products and do some all sorts of clever stuff with the magnetic fields, you could reduce the heat lo loads by over a factor of 10. But the physics here is really complicated. The modeling suggested it would be good, but we didn't know. So we decided in the UK to build this machine called MastU to really test, was this going to work? Now, at this point in my career, I'd cut my teeth on a few engineering challenges, so I was very, very lucky to be offered the opportunity to lead the, the team to design and build this, this very machine. Now, this wasn't easy. This was a, a long project. This was a tough project with late nights, lots of ups and downs. As we assembled over 100,000 bespoke components into this very compact machine, often with cutting-edge materials to sub-millimeter accuracy. It was, it was a real challenge, but we did it. And uh, so here I am having a, a little final look inside the machine before we shut it all up. And then last year we turned it on, held our breath to see what was going to happen. And uh, we were just absolutely thrilled when, when it worked even better than the modeling predicted. So we, we, we showed the, a heat, heat reduction of over a factor of 10. And this was a, a really big step on the path to fusion. Because of this step, now, MasterU is an experiment, but this was such a major breakthrough, the UK has now launched a new program called STEP. And this is to design and build a first prototype fusion power plant to put net electricity on the UK fusion grid. And actually, just earlier this week, we announced the site where we're going to do this. So we are deadly serious and pushing on hard with this, uh, with this concept. So whilst we were making this step forward in the UK, across the Atlantic, in a company called uh, Commonwealth Fusion Systems, they were making a breakthrough of their own. I mentioned earlier we need very strong magnets to, sus to suspend this mini star inside the machine. It turns out the stronger you can make the magnetic field, the better the performance you can get. And so what Commonwealth Fusion Systems did was they built and tested this magnet you see in the bottom left, which is by far the strongest magnet for these types of device devices ever built and tested, and they successfully tested it to 20 Tesla, which is a very, very high magnetic field. So again, this is another major step forward. And off the back of this breakthrough, they are design designing their own prototype power plant and moving ahead at pace. Another key project to mention that's coming online in the next few years is ITER. ITER is still an experiment, but it's of a scale and size that, that's sufficient that should unequivocally demonstrate that we can get industrial quantities of heat from this fusion reaction, 500 megawatts, and get substantially more power out than we put in. And again, in, early in my career, I was lucky enough to, to work on some of the ITER designs and go down to the south of France and have a look at progress. And when you stand next to some of these components and see the scale and complexity of what we're building down there, you, you realize what human beings are capable of. And it really does give you confidence that we can, we can meet the re remaining challenges and deliver fusion energy for the world. One final breakthrough I want to talk about that's very close to my heart and uh, made headlines around the world earlier this year was the smashing of the fusion energy world record at JET. I was uh, lucky enough to be in the control room with the team there and watch them go for that record and deliver it. And, and again, it was just the most thrilling, thrilling time of my career. What was really important is as well as we sustained this record performance in jet, but with materials that are much more relevant for future power plants than any materials that had been used before. So this was another big step forward. So these are a few breakthroughs, but really I'm just scratching the surface. There are many other brilliant teams around the world working on their own concepts and making similar advances to get, get us to fusion energy. No one knows who's going to win the race to deliver fusion energy, but what we have now compared to even a few years ago is many more projects that have got sufficient funding to get serious about the design of the first, first prototypes. But there is still work to be done. There are some questions we don't have the answers to, and we need to be honest about that. So for instance, we don't yet know what materials we're going to build the first generation of fusion power plants out of. This is a very harsh environment. These materials probably don't even exist yet. So at my lab and at labs around the world, there's an awful lot of research going into developing these new materials ready for these first power plant designs. 
we also need to design robotic maintenance systems that can keep these machines online and reliable and deliver the baseload electricity that Fusion promises to deliver. And finally, probably most importantly, no one's yet done a detailed design or even built a machine that can produce lots of net power within the engineering constraints. The physicists know how these things behave and have got some great ideas about how to get that performance, but what we yet have to do is design a machine that can do that without breaking the machine. So this is a big one that we're trying to work on at the moment. But I think with the breakthroughs that we've had and given the progress, I'm really confident that we can do this. Finally, I want to finish on the question of when. The question I'm asked most often, when are we going to have this incredible technology and fusion power on the grid? Well, the honest answer is, we don't know. But just as the Wright brothers' inability to predict how long would it be from Kitty Hawk's first flight to the global jet age, that didn't stop the world piling into human flight like never before. Nor should this fuzzy question of when stop us from seizing on the momentum we have right now in fusion, piling in and turbocharging the global effort to push for the fusion economy the world needs. When I was standing in the control room, watching the team create the most powerful star ever, ever created on Earth, it was one of the best, best reminders of what we're capable of and that we really can deliver the fusion energy that the world desperately needs. Fusion is coming. Thank you.